What is up, our metal brethren of the Forge? Welcome to Metal Forge Reviews, where you can get the best out of your metal releases. Brandon and... Benfo, nice to see you. Here to bring you some reviews of tasty and killer albums that we missed in our segments in the best of January. Yeah, January was definitely a killer month for music, but we decided to check out some of the albums that our fans suggested and definitely round up some of the ones that we missed because there were a few. If you like videos like these, show your support for the channel, click that like button below, and leave a comment on what albums that you're looking forward to for February. Let's get into it. First one on my list is Frozen Soul, Crypt of Ice. Man, the metal scene and comments on our best of January video were like, where's Frozen Soul? And at first, I have to be honest, I thought the album was generic. I was wrong, I, I was wrong, honestly, I was wrong. After a few listens, this record deserves quite a bit of the hype that you guys have shown. People who know us know that we love old school death metal, and when we get a tasty slab of sick death metal riffs, we're gonna pay attention and we're gonna get amped. This record is straight to the point riff city with nothing but pummeling rhythms. This is mid 90s era death metal nostalgia in the best way and a straight to your veins, headbanging cocktail of death metal greatness. My only gripe is I wish the band leaned into something that was a little bit more revolutionary, but this is their debut and their debut is on Century Media. I mean, come on, that's like the best start you can have. I have no doubt that the coming records after this one, backed by the label, we will definitely definitely hear some of the best modern death metal that it has to offer. Three to five frozen skulls. Malakim's Theon is a melodic black metal album that contains that Swedish special sauce. You know, that tangy, crimson-colored goo that balances everything melodic with everything raw and gritty. And it's no wonder, because this band actually has one of my favorite guitarists, Andreas Nilsson of Nagelfar fame. The music has elements of thrash and early 90s black metal, complete with awesome, shouty, agonized vocals that really sound make it sound like the singer is dealing with excruciating agony in the vocal booth. I just love that sort of grunting, shouty style. It feels very genuine when it's pulled off correctly. I love seeing guys from this era say, you know, I want to do something that goes back to what the scene was all about when we started. We as consumers and fans have just gotten so lucky when bands like Bloodbath and Borknagar, Conquering Dystopia, and this is one of those bands. Malachim is getting a four out of five inverted crucifixes. Go check out their band camp where they have merchandise available for your purchase. Next on my list is Aetheric Apotheosis. Ah, the wonderful world of cosmic black metal. One of my favorite places to visit in the winter months, and Aetheric have served up something pretty fantastic with their latest record. This Finnish duo are masterful and deliberate with their black metal compositions. Apotheosis feels majestic in its entirety, like you're wandering a kingdom in the stars in search for the ultimate tome of knowledge. I love the production on this album, as it's crisp and and modern with tinges of that lo-fi quality. Unfortunately, and this is no fault of the band, this genre is well traversed and I find myself wading through a lot of atmospheric black metal bands who write six plus minute songs that just don't dazzle me. They're simply doing their job as music to pass the time or relax to. I don't feel overly engaged and that's completely okay, really. That's what the genre is trying to do. However, I think Aetheric did a fantastic job at what this genre does. If you love atmosphere, Atmospheric black metal, you'll be right at home here. Three out of five, Cosmic Archers. Thou was pretty busy last year. They released three full lengths, and one of them was in conjunction with Kentucky based Emma Ruth Rundle called May Our Chambers Be Full. If you loved May Our Chambers Be Full, 
you're going to want to hear its follow-up, The Helm of Sorrow. Emma's vocals are perfectly matched with this band. And speaking of the band, man, thou has been at it for a long time and has put out a lot of music, but there's something really special with their collaboration with Emma Ruth Rundle. The sorrow and despair are very tangible on this record, and that despair is not only carried by Emma's agonizing vocal style, but also the incredibly weighty guitar riffs and tones and atmospheres that just seem to encompass her in the surrounding band. Thou really did something special by collaborating with Emma Ruth Rundle. I'm giving this EP four out of five spooky, masked, sad persons. They're sad under the mask. You just can't, you can't see it because they have a mask on. Go support Thou by getting their stuff at their band camp. Next one on my list is Ellen the Treeb EP. I completely fell in love with this release. I was pleasantly surprised to find that after some research, I realized that Treeb was actually an update to two songs from their 2014 release of Weltenach and a reimagining of the track to Treeb. And now it is Treeb 2. Out of the gate, I was completely entranced and blown away with the production and compositions on this release. The drums are crystal clear, but highly organic and powerful. The guitars, vocals, and bass are immensely exciting in the mix and carry this release to new blackened heights. One thing I loved is the various changes to how the drums sound during clean parts and other parts of the compositions. Being overly distorted or compressed, it gave the record a really cool vibe to it. Post black metal overall feels very uninspired to me as of late and Ellen completely blows that assumption out of the water. I've tried to get into many of their past releases and unfortunately none of them have resonated with me that much. If Ellen continues to put Push boundaries like they did here, I will 100% be on board. An absolutely fantastic black metal release. If you're hungry for Blackened Fury, this is the perfect appetizer until their next full length. Four to five Skeleton Knight Riders. Brandon, I have to say that that was when you showed me that and told me to check that album out. I loved it completely overlook that one i actually gave that one like a four and a half out of five i just loved it so thank you for putting that one on my radar This was put on our radar from our good friend Josh Co. Thank you, Josh, for uh, recommending this one. I must say that upon first hearing this record, like with many avant-garde bands, I found it pretty difficult to connect with. I even found myself laughing out loud at the random accordion parts that just popped out of nowhere. After a few songs, though, it started to click for me, and I found myself enjoying the album much more. I will say, though, that there definitely seems to be a bit of a disconnect with the themes. There's a, an identity issue with the music. Is the album about trekking through the ocean or getting trapped in the physical layer of the internet? Because, I mean, when you have accordions and sea shanty sort of songs mixed with digital electronic sounds that sound like they're coming from EDM band or something, I want to hear it one way or the other. I don't want both because that kind of messes with the identity of the music to me. Either way, look, this is avant-garde, I get it, they're trying to be different, they're trying to be weird. This album will grow on you if you try it on for size. I'm definitely looking forward to following this band. It would definitely pair well with the movie The Lighthouse, watching it backwards while on mescaline. I think that you'll get something out of the album that way. Maelstrom is getting 4 out of 5 demonic kraken monsters. If you want to hear some really unique black metal, definitely put this album on your list. I don't think that you're going to be disappointed. You'll find some merchandise through a link on their band camp. Well, this year is off to a great start with metal releases. How about you guys? What did you miss out on January? What are you looking forward to in February? Let us know in the comments. Hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. Definitely look forward to chatting with you. We are fine tuning our show so we can give you the best in metal music. As always, go with the gods. We'll see you in our next episode. Take care.